Amen. I'm opening this morning from the book of Haggai, chapter 2. Amen. Just to encourage our hearts again, like God encouraged the hearts of the people when they built the temple again. The Bible says, in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, and I believe on the eleventh day of the ninth month, Pastor Gardner is going to speak to us, amen. saying, amen. amen. And the Bible continues and says, speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? He says, yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord. And work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. And he continues and says, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. You know, they, they built the temple, uh, uh, rebuilt it in troubled times. They went through all sorts. And I know a lot of you can relate to all the things, all the ups and downs that we went through. But God is saying, don't look at that. Expect the glory. Yeah. Expect the peace. He says, I will make this place the desire of all nations. And I know pastor has been saying we're going to have a baptism that is open to the entire community. I just see so much parallel in all that. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready to rejoice? You know, let's rise up. You know, there, there's one part in the Bible where when they were done, the Bible says, you know, there was so much crying and weeping and so much excitement because people were so moved at what had happened. And I believe God this morning that if God will open our eyes to see what he said he's going to do in this house through all these things, we're going to be so full of excitement. We're going to be so full of joy this morning. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Lift up your hands and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the years, oh God, we've been in this place. Thank you, Father. Come on, lift your voice. Thank him. I'm, it's not easy, I'm telling you. The devil doesn't want you to be here. Do you know that? Oh, 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 one second, sorry. You know, Pastor John was talking about Job uh, on, on Tuesday. And I thought about it. That, you know, when God, when she said, you know, uh, uh, God said to, to the devil that, have you seen my servant Job? You know, I thought, he didn't say, who's Job? The devil knew who Job was. The devil had intentions toward Job that he had always wanted to do. And as soon as God said, you know, go do something, he knew exactly what he had to do. So the devil doesn't want us in this place. The devil wants to kill, to steal, to destroy, but we are still going strong after almost three decades. Come on, there is so much celebration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for the glory. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the shaking. Thank you, Lord, that we are not defined by it. We are rather refined by it. We give you all the glory this morning. Come on, give him some shout in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, shout again. Come on. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all glory and all honor. Come on. He is the strength of our life. Come on. Can I have my dancers, please? Come on. Come on right up here, guys. 
You're the strength of my life, my light and my salvation, sword and my shield, father of creation, my rock. Jesus, Jesus, you are my rock. You are the strength of my life. You're the strength of my life, my light and my salvation, my sword and my shield, father of creation, my rock. Jesus, Jesus, you are my rock. To whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear when my enemies come around? My God is bigger. The devil is going down, down, down. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear when my enemies come around? Cause my God is bigger. The devil is going down. Yeah. Break it down yeah. here. He gives me love. He gives me love, 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 love. He gives me joy, 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 joy. He gives me peace, 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 peace. He is my rock. So he gives me love. He gives me love, 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 love. He gives me joy, 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 joy. He gives me peace, 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 peace. He is my rock. You're the strength of my life. You're the strength of my life, my light and my salvation, my sword and my shield, Father of creation, my rock. Jesus, Jesus, you are my rock. You are the strength of my life. You're the strength of my life, my light and my salvation, my sword and my shield, Father of creation, my rock. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you are my rock. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear when my enemies come around? My God is bigger and the devil is going down, down, down. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear when my enemies come around? My God is bigger and the devil is going down, down. He gives me love. He gives me love, 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 love. Joy, 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 joy. He gives me peace, 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 peace. He is my rock. See, he gives me love. He gives me love, 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 love. He gives me joy, 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 joy. He gives me peace, 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 peace. He is my rock. Sing it again. He gives me love. He gives me love, 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 love. He gives me joy, 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 joy. He gives me peace, 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 peace. He is my rock. One more time, he gives me love. He gives me love, 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 love. He gives me joy, 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 joy. He gives me peace, 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 peace. He is my rock. Our, he is our peace, our love, and our joy. Amen? Yeah. Amen. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. 
you, Lord. This is the day. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Now this one requires everybody to dance. Because I know you all can dance because everybody has legs and everybody has hands. So you can either stomp or clap or just wiggle. It doesn't matter. Whatever your style is, we're asking that you would dance like David danced. And dance, da David danced unashamedly before the Lord. And we're here to give glory and honor to God and thank him for all he's done. So come on. Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart. I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance. Like David Come on, let's dance. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David dance. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David. The spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart. I will praise like David praise. I will praise. I will praise. I will praise like David praise. I will praise. I will praise. I will praise like David praise. When the spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will praise. Like David prayed. Oh. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will pray like David. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart. 
Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. Come on. We are celebrating what God has done for us. Come on. This place, should, the roof should be crashing in on us. Give him the highest yes. praise. The highest praise. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord? It's your word. Oh, it's your love. It's your love. Oh, how glorious. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord? Come on, it's your power. It's your power. It was your cross.
revival. We need your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our soul. Kings and kingdoms falling. Kings and kingdoms falling. Hear your people calling. King of kings, we need a miracle. One more time, we need your revival. Your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our soul. Kings and kingdoms falling, kings and kingdoms falling. Hear your people calling, King of kings, we need a
Jesus come Lord Jesus come Lord Jesus come Just say those words Lord Jesus come speak to us, speak to our hearts, speak to our spirit, man. We reverently just wait for the Lord, wait on him. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And I feel like the Lord is saying, as long as I am continually lifted up in this house, I will draw all men unto myself, says the Lord. For you have cried and you have wept for the broken, for the lost, and for the prodigal. And the Lord says, as I am continually lifted up in this house, says God, I will bring them and you will love them, and you will encourage them, 
and you will equip them and you will even send them says the Lord for as I am lifted up in this house I will do the work yes. you need not strive for I will do it says the Lord says the Lord yes Lord thank you for that word Lord Come to lift you up, Lord. All our fathers saw in the days of old. Would you do it again? Oh, do it again. All the stories told, all the miracles, would you do it again, do it again. You said consecrate yourself to me, and you will see amazing things we need your revival holy spirit fire burning ever brighter in our souls kings and kingdoms fall hear your people calling king of kings we There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Would you do it again? Would you do it again? There's a time to heal and a time to build. Yes, Lord. Would you do it again? Would you do it again? You said, consecrate yourself to me, and you will see amazing things. We need your revival, Holy Spirit, fire. Cry out to him.
Hallelujah. I believe God says to you, says, say to my children that have known my presence, you will begin to experience my glory. Amen. I don't know what the difference is between the two, to be honest with you, but that's what I believe the Lord says, that you that have known my presence, you will begin to experience my glory. Amen. Isn't God good? Oh, man. No, no, no. That was, that was like uh, the God of yesterday. <laughs> Isn't God good? <laughs> that, was, that was like saying thank you for yesterday. But he's doing so much more amazing things today. Amen. This is a good day. I'm telling you, if, if God opened our eyes to see, oh, my goodness, we probably won't be able to contain it. I'd love to welcome everybody again this morning. You know, we might stay a little longer today. I hope you all don't mind. You know, I, I'm looking for a time when we bring our lunch to church. You know, not, so that even those that forget their lunch, you know, we can break the bread of those that bring the lunch and feed everybody. Amen. Oh, it can happen. I'm telling you. It's happened before. Amen. Would love to welcome Pastor Gardner as well. Amen. I know that is not Pastor Don. Pastor Dave, I knew that wasn't Pastor Don. Good to see you too, sir. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a great day today. I can already feel it in my spirit, I'm telling you. And it's good to see Pastors Du and uh, Sue and Pastor Dario. Amen. You know what? Can the ushers just bring them to the front? I don't know what they're doing back there. Come on. No, no, no. This is a special day, I'm telling you. You will, you will know why you're here. Come on. Come to the front, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. Are you ready with your offering? Are you, well, a few people are. You know, we've been, we've, been, we've, been, we've been waiting for this day, and I believe, you know, as we bring our offering and tithes, there is actually, uh, Ms. Jojo made an envelope. She gave it to me, I'm sure. Oh, oh, there it is at the back. If you have, and I know you do have something for Pastor Gardner this morning. You know, when I saw the envelope, what I what I do with it? I asked, I asked uh, Sister Jojo, I said, why is, thank you. This is the envelope. If you want to put something in for Pastor Gardner. And I asked her, I said, why is Pastor Gardner smiling? No, I said it was one of those, why did the chicken cross the road kind of question, right? <laughs> right, look, he's smiling, hallelujah. So if you have anything, amen, God bless you, I know you do, because we've been announcing this, amen, as we prepare to bring our tithes and offerings, amen. God is good. I have a scripture here from Genesis chapter 4. You know, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 4, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Verse 3 says, and in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. I always ask myself, how did they know to bring something? I mean, there was, there was just only one family in the earth, right? And, you know, the Bible says Abel was righteous. Cain, not so much. But even the unrighteous one knew to bring something to the house of the Lord. Amen. And God already told us this morning in Haggai, he said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. So I don't see them creating anything. They just took what God has made, repackaged it, and brought it back to God. And that's exactly what it is this morning. You know, you, we got nothing of our own. All we have is from the Lord. And it pleases him to pass those things through us and to bring it to him. Amen. Are you, do you have your offering this morning? Are you ready to bless the Lord? And I say, if, if, if Cain knew to bring something, you know he was a bad guy. He killed his brother. Now, if he had an evil heart and he knew to bring something into the Lord, how much more us children of the light. Amen. Oh, come on. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We bring it to you, O oh God. Our righteousness, O oh God, is even better than Abel's, O oh God, because your blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. 
We thank you for this righteousness that you have given us. Father, we bring it out of our love for you, O oh God. That your spirit moves us. Something moves us this morning to say, bring it to the house of the Lord. And we'll bring it with joy, O oh God. And we thank you for all your promises that never fail, mighty God. Receive all the glory, Lord, this morning. Bless your people, O oh God. Father, just, just uh, see heaven open upon your people, O oh God. A new day, a new time, O oh God. A new season, a new level, a new dimension this morning. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for all this. In Jesus' name and all the saints say, Amen. Amen. Go ahead and receive the offer. I'm going to go real quick through the announcements because we have a, a dance. The children are going to have a dance to talk about the goodness of the Lord. I mean, how many more ways can you talk about goodness of the Lord? I'd love to see the dance this morning. Again, I'd like to welcome everybody again this morning. If you don't know, we're having a rededication service this morning. And there's even more, amen. God has been so good to us. Now, I, I had a, a vision of, you know, really excited people this morning. I know you're all excited in the spirit. Can you let that just show through? <laughs> hey, this is Miss Penny, sorry. <laughs> Let I just show through from the spirit, amen, this morning what the Lord has done, amen, amen. And just a friendly reminder again, next week Sunday is Building Fund Sunday. Please don't forget that. Our regular announcements, of course, remain the same. You know all that. I don't, amen. And uh, we're still making the case for Israel. It's not here this morning, but for people that God has laid in, in their hearts to bring something as Pastor Jan and Elder Denise are leaving for Israel. We always send something every year, and this year, is no different. Amen. Amen. And for the youth, you have your youth in kitchen tomorrow. It's 5.30. I, I said to Miss Jojo, season two starts tomorrow of the, of the kitchen uh, youth. Amen. And I understand Pastor Jan is preaching next Saturday. Yes. <laughs> you know... <laughs> I said to Pastor Bill this morning that she's taking revival to that place. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> revival to that place. Amen. So let's just continue to pray for her. You know, God has done so much here yeah. that, you know, the, the, the word has come that we are sending that out. And other people need to experience it. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I believe I have it all covered. And uh, are you children ready? Amen. God is good. Please sit back and uh, let the Lord minister to you this morning.
Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Didn't our kids do a great job? Amen. And thank you, Miss Adrian. Adrian's the, their director and coordinates the ministry, and so we bless her as well. Amen. Amen. Yeah, if we could get that heavy-duty steel. Now, Pastor Land carried that by himself. I just want you guys to know that. We have several things that we're doing today, and as Pastor Land said, we are probably going to go a little longer than normal, and uh, you probably know that even when we tell you we're just going to keep you a few moments, we keep you usually longer, and so we, we make no apologies. Uh, this morning is special in that it is not only our anniversary, we are concluding 27 years and entering into our 28th year, and I want to thank you for being a part of that. But as I was thinking about this, uh, this morning we are also going to license Jason and Jen into the ministry and uh, issue them credentials from the Independent Assemblies of God International in Canada. And so I'm going to ask that they would come forward at this time and just stand here at the front facing, uh, maybe facing the congregation. How's that sound? I think it's only fair that they face you. And then I'm going to ask that all pastors would come and stand behind them. And I believe that this uh, symbolizes many things, that we are behind you. Amen. Right there in the center, step forward a little bit, a little bit more. There you go. The pastors could come behind them. Amen. Amen. Just get ready to lay your hands upon them. I was thinking about this this morning. Jason is one of the people that have been with us in the church from the beginning. <laughs> Amen. As parents, we drug Jason. We drug him to church. Amen. <laughs> and we, dr we drug him to Chatham. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we thank God for Jay and Jen and for what God has called them to do and what God has called them to be. Amen. And in the spring, we set them aside as youth pastors. And this is the next step is to license them and then eventually uh, full ordination. And so what we're doing is registering their credentials with the Independent Assembly of God International. And uh, as such, that will just give them another level of authority in the kingdom. And so this is the next step. So are you ready to take the next step with them? Yes. Amen. Are you ready to support them in prayer? Yes. Amen. Are you to, ready to support them with your words? Yes. Are you ready to encourage them? Yes. Amen. I'm going to hold you to that commitment. Because that is all part of this. It's not just them today. It's us in this congregation and in this church. And so I'm going to have a couple of things that I'm going to ask them to commit to. And this is kind of like you guys getting married again. And so I'm going to ask you a couple of statements. And then at the conclusion of those statements, I'm going to ask that you say, I do. Or as we had in the wedding yesterday, what did Nathan say? You betcha. Maybe, maybe stick with I do. Maybe stick with I do. Jay and Jen, do you freely and loyally affirm your devotion to the church? Do you promise to live in harmony with its principles, with its ordinances, with its doctrines, believing at all times and subject to its disciplines in government? Do you purpose to live in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ and so to interpret him by word and by life, that the church may increasingly become the fellowship of peace and redemption in the world? Do you intend to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and of the mentors in the church as far as your future relationship and ministry is concerned? Jay and Jen, you are hereby committing yourself to a period of service and preaching the gospel and of exploring what it means to be in the ministry, that which you already know what it means to be in the ministry. As licensed ministers, you are in the process of preparation for full ordination. This provides time and opportunity for not only you, but also the mentors that you submit to in the church to better ascertain if ministry is indeed 
part of the work that God has called you in this life. Therefore, upon your statement of purpose and consecration to the will of God, I charge you to be faithful in studying and fully preparation of the word of God in the work of the ministry, to be constant in prayer, to be diligent in striving to know and to do God's will, to do the work of a good minister of Jesus Christ with courage, loyalty, faith, and devotion. May God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit be with you always, empowering you for the work that God has called you to do. Let's stand to our feet and stretch your hands towards this couple as we license them today, as these pastors lay their hands upon them and pray and just intercede in the spirit. Just start to pray for them right now. Lord, we pray for Jay and Jen as we license them today, as we lay our hands upon them. Lord, we thank you for them. We ask, God, that you would bless them, that you would keep them, that you would make your face to shine upon them. Lord, that you would direct them in their past. Lord, that you would increase anointing and visitation in their lives. Lord God, that you would be with them, not only in the good times, but also in the hard times. Lord, that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them. Today, in the name of Jesus, and with this holy anointing oil, this rose of Sharon from Israel, we anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. If you would pass that around, please. We anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus Christ. We anoint them today as licensed ministers, that which you have called them to, Lord God, that which they have said, I do to, that which they have committed to, God. Be with them. Grant anointing. With this calling, Lord God, bring visitation. Lord, I thank you for it. Bring visitation, Lord. Lord, it's not enough that we just anoint them with oil. What we need and what we're looking for here today, God, that you would anoint them for the work that you have prepared for them. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it. Pastor Gardner, if you would pray, please. Hallelujah. 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 And from this day forward, let it never enter your mind that you are here today because of your name. You are here because I've laid my hands upon you, saith the Lord. Amen. I've called you out. I've called you unto myself, that you may walk with me, and that you may be the vessel of honor that I have chosen in this hour. And this very day I call to you, saith the Lord, that you take my hand as we journey forward as I will walk you through things, you will, be, uh, you will experience situations like never before. But in everything, in every hour, in every moment, I will be with you, saith the Lord. And when the, the naysayers come, uh, turn away the, the words and say, the Lord has called me. I've heard his voice, and I will not let go of his hand. I will never fail you, saith the Lord, uh, for you may see this as a commitment you're making to me, which it is, but I want you to know this day I'm making a commitment to you, a commitment to be with you, to develop you, to prepare you, to anoint you, until uh, they, you are ready to walk in the fullness of that which I have already ordained for you. And I will not fail you. I will never turn you aside. I will never turn away. I will always, always be with you. So from this day forward, remember these words. Uh, hold tightly to my hand. Hold tightly to my hand. Hold tightly to my hand, saith the Lord, for you will learn of me as I draw you close to myself. And you will see the day that through your very countenance, through the words of your mouth and through the direction of your steps, you will bring glory to my name. You are my chosen vessels, saith the Lord. And I, I this day... 
anoint you for this call where until you've been born to make the, this walk journey. And I, I promise that you shall become that which I have created you to be, saith the Lord. Amen, 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 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. Give God glory. Amen. 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 Congratulations. Mm, need a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have one more thing that I want to do before we turn it over to Pastor Gardner. And again, he, go, he knows that this goes without saying, but I want to make sure I mention it today. He has all the time in the world to preach however long he feels he needs. We give him that liberty. Amen. Amen. I appreciate my pastor. Amen. And I appreciate each and every one of you that have made the transformation that has taken place up here at the front so possible. Uh, each and every one of you, I've done my best to make sure that I've shaken your hands and told you personally thank you uh, several times over the course of the last couple of months. And just know that I do, Pastor Jan and I do so appreciate you and the work that you have done and the sacrifice and the gifts and uh, whether it's been materials or whether it's been money to buy and to build things. Uh, you haven't seen this in a week and so you come in this morning, and it's carpeted, it's upholstered. The stack stone is finished on the baptism tank. The stairs have been upholstered. The rails have been put on. Next week, it will be full of water. And on next Sunday night, I think it's at 6.30. I think we have a slide. Uh, 6.30 Sunday night, I think we're going to have a community baptism. And so you are going to uh, 6 p.m. next Sunday. I knew it was 6 p.m. I was just testing you. 6 p.m. next Sunday night, we're going to have a baptism service that is going to be open to the public. And we will be talking beforehand for a little bit to make sure that people do know Jesus as their Savior. And then there will be preparation in the winner's circle room. And uh, we will also be talking and praying for them there. And then we will be water baptizing people. And so let people know that this is a water baptism that is open to the public, church Membership is not required. Membership in the kingdom is, but not membership in the church. And so we are not going to hinder you from the waters of baptism if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And so you probably have people, if you live in a complex or have live in your neighborhood, you probably have people that maybe would like to be water baptized. I believe it's a wonderful opportunity to invite them out to church. And so that's next Sunday night at 6 p.m. Please bring proper attire, some shorts, dark shorts and a T-shirt and a towel. And uh, we will ha be happy to baptize you. It's going to be a great service. Look out. We're going to tear this place up. Well, we're not going to ruin it, but we're going to wreck it, if you know what I mean. Amen. Now, one person in particular, there's been several people that have been instrumental in this building project, this latest renovation. And I'm going to call him for for today, and I'm going to present to him a little award. And here is the award that I'm going to present him with. And it is a multi-tool. It has three different ways that you can measure things, whether they're level or not, horizontally, vertically, and also on a 45-degree angle. It has metric and English ruler on it. It has a tape measure off to the side. And it also has a laser, horizontally and vertically. And so this is an award that I'm going to present to Mr. Kyle McDonald. 
if you would come forward and receive it. Come on, Kyle. Now, while he's coming, the reason I'm presenting him this award is because there was a point during the construction process. Let me just check here to make sure. Yeah, it is. It's level. I just want to make sure. Yep. That he had to make sure everything was level. Matter of fact, we had a, we had a pipe in the plumbing going to the plumbing tank, and, and it was just a little crooked. He had his level. He had his little level on this piece of PVC pipe. And I said, Kyle, I said, could I borrow your level for a minute, please? He said, sure, Pastor. He gave me the level, and I went and hit it on him. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us till Jesus comes to build this thing. We keep level and everything. So, Kyle, with, with, with much pomp and circumstance, we present to you, and thank you for your work, amen, with this level. You can say he's on the level. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. It gives me pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today for our anniversary. He has blessed me and Pastor Jan and this congregation many times over the years. He has been our pastor for 33 years, I think, or something like that, somewhere right in there. And I have learned a lot of things from him. I remember at Clawson. Pastor Gardner had the unique ability. This is one of the little hidden gems about Pastor Gardner you may not know about. But in Clawson, they had these great big chandeliers. And Pastor Gardner had such discernment, he could tell when one of the little bulbs on one of the chandeliers were burned out. Now, these chandeliers were how high in the sky? 50, 60 feet? Could have been 50, 60 and I mean, I want you to know, he knew when there was one bulb burned out. It's kind of like I know today that the sconces on the side wall have not been turned on. It's like I have, I have a little bit of that. But what's nice is that John's turning them on right now. So that I can relax and partake of the service. And so when I get on your nerves... Because of things like that, thank you, Pastor, <laughs> for teaching me those things. At this time, I would like to welcome Pastor Leonard Gardner. Would you give a good God bless you and a Zion welcome as he comes to share the word today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to Jesus. Amen, amen. It's a tremendous honor, and I speak for my son Dave as well as myself to be with you today in this special anniversary time and to rejoice with you in the goodness of God, the favor of God upon this ministry and the things that you've accomplished far beyond what you can measure with a level today. I'll tell you, this is a beautiful job. Uh, I think it must have been done by a professional. It seems balanced to me. <laughs> That's saying something when you're as old as I am. <laughs> you know, not everything stays balanced. <laughs> But praise God for his faithfulness. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every time Pastor introduces me, I get in more trouble. <laughs> so when he says he's going to introduce me, I just pray it's not too long. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a great joy and to see God's hand upon your pastors. I believe God's yeah. given you the best. I believe that. And then I trust that as you agree with me in that regard, he'll always be in your prayers, always be supported by you, always, always defend them, uphold them, strengthen them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The enemy has enough garbage to say 
don't add a word to it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That, that was inspiration right there. I don't know if you understand that. But I believe that to be true. Hallelujah. So it's my joy to be here today and uh, to have uh, uh, a part in this very important service. What Bill was so kind not to say a little earlier when he said the service is going to last maybe a bit longer than normal is that I have that reputation. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, I, but I, I rejoice in that. See, when I was about two, two and a half years old, they told my parents, three doctors told my parents to go to funeral home and prepare to bury me. I had uh, in, incurable double pneumonia. And they said I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't live. My mom and dad, thank God for them, who uh, didn't want to accept that word, weren't even Christians at the time. But God led them to a newspaper advertisement which led them to a church which was pastored by a woman that believed in miracles. Amen. The kind of stuff that we sang about and talked about today. Miracles. They are for today, you know, folks. They are. They are for today. And what God did was give me a brand new set of lungs instantly. Instantly. And I give him glory for that. But I also use that as an excuse for why I sometimes preach long. I say, I'm working on the second set. You must be understanding and patient. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. It's so good to see you, Daryl and Sue. And so it's so good to uh, so good to have a part in Jay and Jen's uh, commitment this day for the work of the ministry believe you're going to see good things from these kids. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't mind me calling you kids, do you? Really? It just gives you a good feeling once in a while, you know. Bless God. Hallelujah. Well, I trust we can share something today that will uh, be an inspiration and just sort of let you know our hearts are with you. We pray for you. We can't get here as often as we would like to, but we're trying to follow God's direction and where he places us from week to week and, and do what we feel he wants us to do. Pray for us that we'll always be sensitive to that. And, uh, and so we'll just trust that together we'll reap reward for any good thing that results. Amen. But you are among our favorites. That will never change. And uh, I, uh, so I do consider it a blessing to be here. That was a wonderful worship service, wasn't it, today? Yeah. Hallelujah. And some of these people think they know how to worship. They got to join you once in a while. Just come by Chatham, you know, and turn off Channel 7. I'm going to get in trouble. I better get right to the word of God here. Bless the Lord. I'd like uh, to go this morning to the Song of Solomon. If you brought your Bible, I would invite you to open them with me. Can I give you this? I was going to throw it to you, but I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Song of Solomon is a special book in the Bible. Not only because of its uh, different approach to revealing truth to us, but because of the representation that it, it brings to us of the deep, deep, 
fellowship between us and Jesus. It's special. And as, as we look into this book, often called the Canticles, which means words set to a melody, and that's not rapping. <laughs> it brings to us powerful metaphor, uh, simile, which helps us to understand the heart of God even more. Sometimes I hear people say, I want to know the heart of God more than ever before. And I think that's good. I, I really believe that's healthy. But, you know, I, the, not many realize that one of the greatest ways to know the heart of God is to spend time in the Song of Solomon. Because as our beloved, he has a lot to say to us, his loved ones. And when we listen to what he has to say, we can feel his heart. We can see his heart. We can uh, embrace his heart because it's something beyond words even. He takes us into heavenly places with these metaphors. Jesus used metaphors, you know, when he teach, when he taught. And uh, it, 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 it's embraced as one of the ways that God expresses himself because we are not used to this kind <clears throat> of heavenly language. So he takes our hand, which is often, you know, tied to this world, and he takes the other hand and he leads us into the places of revelation. Otherwise, we would not know truth. How many of you know unless he reveals himself, we cannot know him? So that speaks uh, in the first instance of his love for us, the depth of his love for us, and commitment to us that he would want us to know him even as he knows us. Now, he knows everything about us. I only got one amen, but he really does. Some of you are just scared to death. Where is he going today? <laughs> No, 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 he really, he knows everything about us, everything. He not only knows the yesterdays and the todays, he knows the tomorrows. He knows what you're thinking right now. Who gave that little guy a microphone? <laughs> you know, he, he, know, he knows it all. But the exciting thing is he says, I want you to know me like I know you. Wow. Hallelujah, because for a long time, the church world has just sort of set that off into the future somewhere and said, someday we're going to know him. And when we see him suddenly everything, then we're going to know all about. Well, listen, he's not waiting for that. He's calling to us right here. Here's where we need it. Hallelujah. We need it badly. But. Here in the Song of Solomon, there's, there's just, I think, a special, special expression of love that he gives to us individually as his people, to us collectively as his church. And I'd like to take you to one such metaphor today. Uh, before I do, let's just lay a little bit of foundation. You know basically what a metaphor is. It's a, it's a type of speech in the in the English language where one thing is expressed as another thing, which helps us understand that other thing as, as if it were that very thing. For example, when John the Baptist introduced Jesus, he said, behold the Lamb of God. Now that was a metaphor. Jesus wasn't literally an animal man, uh, obviously a lamb. But he had the function, he had the ministry of a lamb. And John knew and Father knew we needed to see him that, in that way in order for us to appreciate the, the, the effectiveness of his blood as a remission, the only remission for sin. And so he uses that metaphor because our understanding the natural is so limited. 
And, and similarly is just somewhat similar to that. It's one thing compared to another, something unlike that, and tied together with the words as or like. Uh, Isaiah used simile often in his prophetic word. He said, uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed, shall mount up with wings as eagles. Now, even though I, I have high appreciation and am greatly impressed with the spirituality of many of you in here this morning, I see no wings. We shall mount up with wings as eagles, my God. So what does that do? It sets us to searching and understanding how eagles mount up, how they learn to depend upon the updraft, how they learn, which is a type of the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, and they will not leave their perch until they sense it's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus, teach us, teach us, teach us. And these things are important, you know, as we search out the scriptures. In this particular one, God is talking in chapter 2 and beginning with verse 8. Uh, yeah. About the beloved himself pursuing us, the loved ones. Let's just read the entire passage, which is only a few verses, but then go back and consider what I feel the Lord is saying to us this morning. Because I want to certainly commend you for where God has brought you. I bless you for your flowing in the spirit, but I also want to challenge you. It's not over yet. <laughs> what does that mean, Pastor? I have no idea. <laughs> but God does. And I know that I know that I know it's not over yet. Beginning with verse 8, please. The voice of my beloved, the voice of my beloved. Who is that? Yeah. The Lord Jesus. Behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's nothing stops him. He goes over them all. Now, my beloved is like, here's a simile, is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. Now, the word wall in the Hebrew is speaking of the wall of a house. There are two other different Hebrew words. One that speaks of a wall around a city different word that speaks of a wall of a building. This speaks of a wall of a house. And he makes that personal. Behind our wall. And he looketh forth, the King James says, at the windows, literally in the Hebrew, it's through the windows. Showing or revealing himself through the lattice. And my beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he didn't say go away? <laughs> you got to read every word. See, because where he wants to take us is assured because he's with us. See, it's not a question. It's not us depending upon the map or the, 
What is it? Yes, thank you. There is a GPS. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's with us. God's been impressing me so much with that word recently. And my beloved, I'll read that again, verse 10, spake and said unto me, notice the personal pronoun here, unto me, certainly unto us all born again believers, but this is also a very personal thing. Receive this as something he's saying to you. Rise up, my love. Oh, that excites me. I love you. I love you. My fair one, and come away. Notice this next three verses. For lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. Bless the wonderful name of the Lord. I call that moving time. He's setting, he's setting the stage here for the message that he's going to speak. Now, don't, don't get upset. When I use the word moving time, you think I'm saying, you just finished this and you got to look for another building. No, no, I, I'm not talking about physical moving. I'm talking about spiritual moving. There's time and seasons in which God moves in a very special way. He taught the children of Israel this. You remember? With the, with the cloud, and the pillar of fire. And the interesting thing about the way he taught them is they had to look up. They had to look up to know. And when that started to move, when the cloud started to move, they knew, brother, it's time to pack up. You know, no matter, no matter how how much you were finally happy about settling down for a little while. It's kind of the feeling you get when you're, when you're young and then and the voice of mom comes through the bedroom door and says, come on, it's time to get up, particularly in a school day. You know, perhaps they, they realize that in, in, in following the Lord, in wanting to go where he was going to take them, it meant that they were going to be a moving kind of people. The winter is past. It's, it, it, it's, time. it's time to move again. The time of darkness, the time of cold, the time of bitterness is, is behind. In other words, they, they, they focus is to be upon our destiny, not upon our history. Thank God for history. You know, remember the pit from which you were digged. Don't forget that. But don't love it so much such as you want to set up camp in the pit. It says it's time to see the cloud moving again. It's time to see the pillar of fire move in. I think I heard this morning during worship service a cry for revival. Hallelujah. You know, the word revival speaks about the believer, not about the sinner. For years, you know, we've had the special meetings called revival meetings, and, and, and we think it's only a time to get sinners in. No, no, sinners don't need revived. They, they need vived. <laughs> it's a believer that needs revived. And, and, and so he's setting, he's setting the stage here for something very important. And he says in the next verse, flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. Time of singing of birds. 
mating birds is come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Hallelujah. The voice of the turtle dove. You know, I some number of years ago when the Lord had led me to uh, do a series on the Holy Spirit. Pastor knows about that. I think they were with us at that time. I had, I had an unusual thing occur. In the house we were living in, we were overlooking a little man-made lake and there was a large deck on the backside and that deck uh, was surrounded by a, a um, <laughs> what am I thinking about? It was it was like a railing, okay. And every morning, every morning, outside the place where I was studying. A pair of doves would come. Every morning, it was it was phenomenal. I didn't, you know, even think about it much for the first several days or weeks. But then, when it continued, I thought this is unusual. And what they would do is they would sit there on the railing of that day, that deck, and they sing to one another. And, and when, when I was done studying, they left. I, I believe the Lord even controls, you know, the animal kingdom. And, and uh, then some number of years later, we moved. And now in the, in the condominium, that uh, I'm living in, a pair of doves have moved in. I know where they came from. They may have came from uh, uh, Shelby Township <laughs> to Clinton Township, but there they there they are, and they're right on the southwest corner of the house up by the downspout, singing away. And I learned something. I didn't know this, but devs are capable of producing young every month of the year. They're a very active <laughs> animal. And the little ones are so cute. I think I love them so much because I know they're a type of the Holy Spirit. And uh, sometimes, you know, they either fall out of the nest or, or mama uh, shoves them out. And they just, they just lay there. They're, they're so cuddly. You, you could put them in the palm of your hand like that. But they can only see in one direction. They have no peripheral vision. They only see, oh, God, give us this kind of vision because distraction is a major threat to seeing the fulfillment of God's purpose in our lives. It was made not only moving time. I believe the word of the Lord says it was mating time. One more thing he says here. And then we're going to get back to the word he's speaking. Verse 13 says, The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Hallelujah. You know, the fragrance of ripened grapes is always, always a sign of the harvest. Moving time, mating time, harvest time. Hallelujah. 
Now he repeats the message. He says it again, same words. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Come away. Now he's represented himself here. On, in verse 9, he says, I, this is the beloved. He is like a roe, also translated gazelle in some translations, or a young heart. Let's hold on to that word for a little bit, a young heart. When he uses the word heart, he's not talking about that organ in our body which is responsible for pumping the blood. It's not spelled with an E, it's spelled H-A-R-T, and it is a kind of a deer. There were actually three kinds of deer that were prevalent in Palestine at this time. One was a fallow deer, it's spoken of only once in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy. Another was called the roe deer. It's spoken of seven times in the Old Testament. But the most common of all was called a red deer. That's spoken of 21 times. 11 times speaking of the male red deer as a heart. That's the name of the male red deer. Now the female counterpart was called a hind, H-I-N-D. That's spoken of 10 times. So the combination of these, 21 times is talking about the red deer, but 11 of those times talking about the heart, the male red deer. The red deer was actually a, stood about four to five feet high at the shoulders, had horns, ten horns you see on his head, short stubby type horns, probably most like what we call the white-tailed deer today in our, in our society. And for reasons that are very important, the word of the Lord comes here and says, I want you to see me like a heart. He didn't say I am a heart, obviously. He said, I want you to see me like a heart. Now, what most of us have the problem, uh, problem with in our Bible reading and our Bible study is we never take the time to look up or to search out or to find out why God decided to use that as a metaphor. But he, remember with me, he's the one that created everything. So can you see him in the creation of the male red deer, the heart, being so carefully detailed, so carefully specific as he put that together, realizing he was going to use that as a metaphor to help us to know him better? Wow. That's love. do part of the creation just to teach us. And that's, this isn't the only case. Of course, it's, it's prevalent through the Bible. And we see this heart, this right here and now, who is going to represent our Lord come leaping over the hills, over the mountains, because, you see, he's, he's above everything. There's no mountain that he can't pass over or tunnel through. 
And there's no river he can't cross. If it seems too wide, he can just walk on it. So here he comes, uh, and he comes uh, in an excited manner. He's, he's, he's stirred in his own uh, uh, being because he has a message to deliver that must be delivered to the one he loves. And so he comes all the way up to the window of the house of the one he loves, and he's standing there peering through the lattice. And the first word he says to us collectively and us individually is arise. Arise. Now by implication... That's to come up higher, come up from a, a cot or a place that you're laying, lying down, because we're going somewhere. It's moving time. Hallelujah. He doesn't just go on and do his own thing without us. He wants us to be a part of what he's all about. What an exciting thing to know. He loves us so much, he won't go do it without us. Not that he needs us, but we need him. And he chooses to use us out of his love for us. We see, we see that in the resurrection of Lazarus. Would you believe with me that if Jesus had enough power to call that boy out from the grave, he could have called him out unwrapped? But he chose to allow some of his people to get involved in the miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He could do it all himself. He chose through the foolishness of preaching to save some. That keeps you humble. In fact, if that doesn't do it well enough, just remember he said, it's foolishness of this preaching stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he's looking through the window and he's saying something. When I think he says, arise, get up. Well, you know, I, I, I remember at least four times in the scripture that he talks about kinds of beds. One kind of bed that he talks about is the bed of ease or the bed of idleness. The bed of just not doing anything, just this letting time pass, letting things come and letting things go. Actually, to be a bit uncouth about the whole thing, we could call it laziness. <laughs> Another kind of bed in, in, in scripture is a, a bit the bed of weariness. Boy, even in the state of our humanness, you can get weary. You get tired. Another is a, a third kind is the bed of self-serving. It's all about me. All about me. Our last book, it's titled, After Me, You're First. <laughs> Dealing with self. Jesus said, and if any man, any man, say any man. Amen. Say any woman. Any woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, follow me. Let him... And I self. Before you get any further, you've got to deal with self. 
It's the first thing. Because it's a hideous giant beyond that that most of us comprehend. And then there's the fourth one is the bed of obvious of sinful practices. Now I'm 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 stirred, I'm moved, I'm I'm because here is a Lord coming to us. And he is interested in involving us in that which he has prepared for us and ordained for us to participate in as part of the reason he created us. We have purpose, folks. We have purpose. We are not an accident. I say that I, I don't even care about your biological history. You're not a mistake. God created you. He created you. He has a plan. And here he comes. And he's looking, I believe, in a fresh way at the church of Jesus Christ today. Much of the church has become weary. Much of it has become idle. We go through motions. We are religious, but listen, if anybody knows how to do religion, we know how to do religion. But he's saying to us, it's time. Get up. Arise. 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 The Lord has been talking to me a lot lately about this simple thing. He said, it's time to move from being a believer to being a follower. You notice when he called the, the disciples, he, he didn't say, do you believe in me? He said, do you follow? Or he said, follow me. See, this is a journey. It's a trip we're on. We're going somewhere. Hallelujah. We're not just getting something. Thank God for the event, the great gift of salvation that comes. It's critical. There's no other way to begin but being born again. <clears throat> and there's no greater miracle than being born again. But it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. No, no. He's saying that it's time to move. I, I, I believe that we have, we the church, have become so, so idle, so weary in some cases that we've let this whole thing boil down to just who we are and not include where we're going. See, there's a stir in my spirit that says, the, the, the heart is looking through the window and he's saying, come on, I'm going somewhere and I want you to go with me. <clears throat> the message to the church of Laodicea is put it this way, Revelation 3.20 he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He's not only looking in our window, through our window, he's, he's knocking at our door. He says, If any man will hear my voice and will open the door, I will come in to him and fellowship with him, commune with him, and he with me will enter into a realm of communion and fellowship as we continue the journey. I, I, I feel a lot like when I was a little, little boy and, and I got hold of the hand of my, my dad or my mom. I really didn't care how many tongues that truck was that was going 
down the highway that, as we were trying to cross the street. I didn't wholly appreciate uh, that if that truck hit me, I would be, would not be here. Because I had the hand. What were you doing with the hand? I'm following. I'm following. And so if we're a follower, pardon the, the pun, it, it, it follows that we will respond to the cloud, the pillar of fire, whatever it is that God is using to point the way and to trigger the truth, the, the fact that it's time to move. I didn't know what, when I was real little, what those three lights were. I didn't know what they represented. I didn't know. That sometimes you should stand still. And sometimes you should start walking. And I didn't need to know all those things as long as I had hold of the hand. Because that intelligence, that understanding was vested in my parents. Can we understand that with taking the hand of Jesus is more than something that's incidental. It is something that's an absolute necessity. Amen. When he said, come, 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 come. We meant that. I got to get sensitive to time. I don't know when I started. What time did I start? Well, I don't, I don't want to be weary you and well doing. You see, I think this day, the day in which we're living is, is so critical. I, it, it's in my spirit. You, I know I'm so old I should just lay down and shut up. But I hear something. I hear something. I'm looking through the window and I see somebody. And I open my ear and I hear something. Arise. Arise. Come up higher. See, Lord. I believe the call that we have before us is so great that he can't tell us everything up front. Wouldn't ruin us. We try to make it happen our way. I remember the first time I, I had uh, presbytery. And, and, and uh, there were three very prominent, well-known people that prophesied. But they didn't prophesy very much. It was kind of like a silence. And then they said, we can't tell you what he told us. The phrase that I, I, I took hold of was, because you can't bear it at this hour. Right, right, right. So thank you, Jesus. That, that's not, it doesn't sound, you know, like a, 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 an appreciation, but it was, it, was, it was a necessary thing. In other words, just, just walk with me. Just, just love me. Hey, little kid, come on. Take my hand. I've got some things that I want to do. If I told you 
you run ahead and mess it all up. Just trust me. We're going somewhere. We're doing something. I'm knocking at your door. But you got to open the door. I was reading something the other day. This is a, a different sermon, but I'm just going to. You know, when Peter was nearing the end of his ministry, Acts chapter 12, it was such that Herod had learned to cut off the heads of some of these people who talked about Jesus was made everybody happy. So he took James, you know, and he separated his head from his body. And the people got so excited about that, the religious people got so excited that he said, well, I'm going to go get somebody with a bigger head. I'm going to get Peter. Throw him in prison. The plan was next morning we're going to take care of him. Peter, he had something because he slept that night. He was chained to a soldier on either side. There were two soldiers outside the prison door. And he was sleeping so solid that when the angel came to release him, he had to give him a swift kick in the side. And he didn't really wholly wake up till he got out. The angel, God sent an angel and released him there and he walked out of that prison door. Then he got out to the gates of the city. The angel was still with him and the gate opens of its own accord. Long before somebody found out that this can happen electronically. <laughs> God knew all about that electronic stuff. But the thing I'm getting to, the thing that's important is there was one more door between he and the church. God had opened the first two, but he wasn't going to open a third one. It was up to the church to open the third door. And when Peter came and started knocking on the door, effectively the answer, he was, Peter was the answer. They were praying for him to survive and, and get out and he, he's knocking on the door. The answer wanted in. But the little girl that answered the door, while she recognized Peter's voice, she was so excited about this whole thing. She ran to tell everybody our prayers have been answered and they wouldn't believe her. You saw you heard a, a ghost or, you, or something wrong with you. You need deliverance. No, no. There was one door that they had to open. Revelation 3.20, there's one door that God will not open. Not that he cannot. He will not. You got to grab him. And he stands at our window and he says, look, things beyond anything you ever have imagined, I have in store for you. You know about your unsaved family members, your unsaved relatives? You know about the sin and iniquity that is rampant. You know you've been you've been praying, believing, see, there's things yet to happen. Hallelujah. He 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 to come already for us. I think he's anxious to see us. We're anxious to get out of here. But not until he's done with us. 
And, 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 and the thing we need to understand this morning, the reason we're still here is he's not done with us. He is not done yet. He's got more. He's got more. He's got more. He's got more. Now, I just believe I am getting a little long, so I'm going to cut this short. Maybe sometime I'll preach the other four chapters or something. I don't know. I just keep on. Sometimes you get so full of the word, you just don't know where to cut it off, you know. Remember, Jesus taught all day. And one could ask, well, then, why did he represent himself as a heart? Why did he use that? What is there about the heart that's important to us as we take his hand and journey with well, there are several things about the heart. I could talk about the nature of the heart. I could talk about the, the habits of the heart. But the one thing I just feel to emphasize in closing this is the enemy of the heart. And the reason for that is the enemy works so hard to abort, to prevent, to stop, to inhibit the full manifestation of everything that's in the heart of God and he has put in our hearts. And we've got to be confident as we hold his hand. It doesn't matter how big the truck is coming down that road. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And God built that very thing into the heart. There is a natural enmity that exists between the heart an enmity that exists between the heart and the serpent. Way back in Genesis 3.15 when God was created cursing the serpent, which is the type of the devil himself, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Hallelujah. <sighs> the heart hates the serpent. And God has given the heart the ability to sense where the serpent is hiding. If he's down a hole, if he's under the shrubs, under the bushes, the heart knows. I think of the scripture Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. He said, we are not ignorant of his devices. And I want to encourage you this morning to say to you, regardless of how high the mountain may look in front of you, regardless of how wide the river appears, whether you can swim or not, I want to say that I, as we hold the hand of Jesus, he's going to take us through every battle, every war, every opposition. He is going to break down, break into pieces that which every enemy represents, and we're going to have victory in the name of Jesus. I believe that. So the heart knows that down in that hole is a dirty old snake. So what does he do? He goes over to the hole and he, he 
breeze. <laughs> if I can animate the serpent, he says, no, 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 cut it out, quit. I can't, I can't withstand that breath. Breath. Numa. What is his name? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Folks, we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Principalities, powers, darkness, rulers of this world. The Holy Spirit is greater. He's greater. I don't know what is coming in this world and the natural. You folks just had an election over here, I think, a few months ago. We're about to have one over there. And I don't see an awful lot of difference between yours and ours. We need the Holy Spirit, don't we? We need revival. We need a move of God. We need a stirring. We need the saints to rise up and say, this is our day. This is our hour. Thank God for everything he's done in the past. But we are going to move forward in God, and we're going to see what he, he does in the future. And when that heart breathes down that hole, that serpent will not stay down there, nor will he stand in the bush. He comes right out of hiding. Paul wrote to the Colossian church and said about Jesus, he made, he made a show of them openly, openly. Come out of that hole. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting for you. And he comes out of that hole. And then the serpent shows himself. The heart moves in, and he grabs him. <laughs> and he kills him, and he eats him. And when he eats the serpent, the pain is so intense that the heart can't continue on without water. He's got to have water. Water, 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 water. David said in the song that as the deer panteth after the water, so panteth my heart after thee, O God. And he said, as he hung on the cross in June chapter, uh, June, John chapter 19. Jesus said, I thirst, I thirst, I thirst. I'm dealing with Satan. I'm killing him. I'm taking his power. I'm taking the keys. There's something big going on. Hallelujah. Do you know that the enmity between the heart and the serpent continues even after the heart dies? A traveling man going across a snake infested wilderness will choose to sleep, sleep under the hide of a heart. Heart's been dead. Sleep under his hide. And the serpent will not touch that man. Because even the dead heart, the skin, is repelled by the serpent. He will not touch it. 
Psalm 91 says something like, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, my refuge, my ass, in him will I trust. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody says, your, your, heart, your heart is dead. He, he, he died 2,000 years ago. Oh, no, that, that was, that was just, just the hide you saw there. That, he, he's alive. He's very much alive. He's alive forevermore. My shelter, my dwelling is under, under him. I'm under him. I'm under him. This last thing about the heart is do you know that the blood of the heart is an antidote for the venom of the serpent. Somebody bitten by a serpent, give him the blood, give him the blood. Give him the blood of the heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, the blood of Jesus washes us whiter than snow. The blood of Jesus defeats and devours the power of the enemy. The blood of Jesus will fight against the powers of darkness. There's a heart. There's a heart in your window. There's a heart because he loves you. He really loves you. Say, Pastor Gardner, you wouldn't say that if you knew my weaknesses. You know, oh, he knows all that stuff. He knows all that stuff. He's greater than all that stuff. He loves you. And I want to. I want to leave this challenge now. I know this isn't new to this church. You get, you get powerful word all the time in this church. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge even to come here and preach. You've heard it all. But sometimes I think, what can I say that they haven't heard, Lord? says, I, I'm not asking you to say something they haven't heard. I'm asking you to say what I want you to say in this season, in this hour, and what is relevant to this time. Hallelujah. There were times even in Jesus' ministry he had to say, and again I say unto you, I challenge you this morning, folks. Keep on keeping on. Keep your head up high. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of the saints of old, some of the great people that I've known over the years, some of the most well-known, powerful teachers and preachers, singers are gone home. Does that mean it's over? No, it doesn't mean it's over. It means it's up to you now. And it's up to me till he calls us home. The baton is passed. The heart is in your window. And while we celebrate 27 years, was that right? And while we tend to just sit back and take our handkerchief, wipe our brow and say, never thought we'd get through that one. I come here today to borrow your handkerchief and take it from you because 
There's a lot more ahead. A lot more ahead. A lot more ahead. Hallelujah. There's a heart at your window. Stand with me, will you please? I'm just going to bring this to a close. Got to shut up sometime. Hallelujah. 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 What are we singing? Look at this. All ready to baptize. Hallelujah. 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 I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. There was a blind man at the gate of the city of Jericho, and he heard Jesus was passing by. And he knew, he knew if Jesus touched him, he'd never live in that dark world again. He didn't even take time to take his garment off and fold it up and say to his buddy, will you hold this in case it doesn't work? It's, the Bible says he cast it aside. Yes. I've decided there's no turning back. Hallelujah. Give us that spirit, Lord. Give us that spirit. Give us that Hallelujah. spirit. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus, forevermore. Thank you, Lord. There's no turning back. How many of you will commit that to Jesus this morning? I, there's not, not, I, I, I'm only a messenger, mm -hmm. that's all. You're not committing anything to me. Taking hold of the hand of Jesus. I'm going to follow. I'm going to walk. I'm going to see the glory. The glory. Glory. The glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, none go with me. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go.
Lord, I just thank you for this precious group of people. I thank you, Lord, for the leadership in this ministry. People who love you, people whose heart is set on you, people who have taken your hand and said, let's go with Jesus. Thank you for every soul that's been saved through this ministry. Every life that's been changed, every bondage that's been broken. Every sickness and disease has been healed. I give you praise, Jesus. And then I add to the, all of that our praise for what you're going to do. Hallelujah. We've asked, we've cried, we believe. Thank you, Jesus. We've seen your face through the lattice. We've heard your knock at the door. We've heard your word to arise. And we choose to go forward in your name. All glory, all praise be unto you, Lord. Touch every heart. Do a work this very morning. Let resolution be made in the heart of everyone. Lord, take my hand. Just a closer walk with thee. That's, that's all I want, Lord. Just a cl closer walk with thee. Yes, Lord. Grant it, Jesus. Grant it, Jesus. Is it's my plea. Way. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be, yes. Just a closer walk with thee. Thank you for sharing this time and allowing us to be here with you today. Uh, you will always be in our prayers, on our hearts. We love you in Jesus. God bless. Thank you. Bless her. Stop me. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this day. It's been special. We do have some cake and coffee in the room next door in the Winter Circle area. And there will be Sunday School Winter Circle next Sunday. And so God bless you as you're dismissed today. Please join us for some coffee and some cake as we celebrate 27 years, entering into our 28th year of ministry here in Chatham. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Give somebody a hug, a high five, a handshake. Bless somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. All the stories.